as we start dividing fractions, I want to look at a model first of what dividing fractions looks like. Uh, so I have my first problem. I have one half divided by one eighth. Uh, and you can see that my model has one half. Um, before I start uh, working with this model, um, let's go ahead and look at a model of whole number division. Uh, so in this problem, I have 12 divided by 3. Um, we know from our experience with the division that this answer is going to be 4, but let's look at why the answer is 4. Um, remember with division, uh, I can interpret this problem two different ways. Uh, I can either interpret this problem as a question that's asking me how many groups of three I can make, or if I make three groups, how many would be in each group. Um, but either way, remember, I'm starting with my total and I'm working backwards to find my answer. So I have a total of 12 squares. And dividing that by three can mean I'm making groups of three. So how many groups will that be? So we can see here after making groups of three, I have one, two, three, four groups. Uh, the other way to interpret this would be if I make three groups, how many will be in each group? So I'm just going to make three big groups of even size. And in those three groups, I have one, two, three, four things in each group. Uh, when we're dealing with fractions, it's normally easier to think about it the first way. I know the size of my group, so how many groups is that going to equal? Uh, so as we look at um, one half divided by one eighth again, uh, let's be thinking that my group size is going to be one eighth. So that will be represented by uh, this circle. I have one eighth of it colored. And I want to see how many groups of size one eighth, I can fit into one half. So if I line this up, you can kind of still see that green back there shaded. How many one eighth pieces am I going to be able to fit into one half? So I can count. I know that that one fits. I will be able to fit two, three, four. So I will be able to fit four of one eighth into one half. And I can check that with multiplication. I can go back just like in division. I know that once I get my answer, I can check it by doing four times three should equal 12. So let's do four times one eighth, and that should equal one half. So by checking four times one eighth. Okay, remember when I'm multiplying by a whole number, I have to put that whole number over one. So I'm multiplying a fraction times a fraction. So now you can either cross reduce or uh, you can reduce at the end. Um, I'm going to go ahead and practice my cross reducing. So uh, I see that 4 and 8 both have a common factor of 4, so I'm going to divide by 4, divide by 4, and 4 divided by 4 is going to be 1, 8 divided by 4 is going to be 2. So then top times top, bottom times bottom, 1 times 1 is going to be 1, 1 times 2 is going to be 2. And I've just verified that using my model got me the correct answer. So let's actually look at that uh, using the stay switch flip method. Uh, some of you might have heard keep change flip before. It means the same thing. 
Essentially what this means is in order to solve a division problem with fractions without using a model like this, we are going to have our first fraction stay the same. So stay, I'm going to switch the division sign to multiplication, and then I'm going to flip my second fraction over uh, to its reciprocal. So I'm going to go ahead and write stay, switch, flip. So now my fractions have stayed, my sign switched, my second fraction flipped. And now I just multiply like normal. Um, again, I can either choose to cross reduce or I can simplify at the end. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and simplify at the end this time. 1 times 8 is going to be 8. 2 times 1 is going to be 2. I can see that I can divide both of them by 4. Oh, I'm sorry, I can divide each by 2. Eight divided by two is four. Two divided by two is one. And since my answer is over one, I can simplify that even further just to four. And so now I can see that this stay switch flip method works to find me the correct answer. So let's look at another model. I want to do one fourth divided by one half. So remember I told you to think that I'm trying to make groups of size one half. How many groups can I make starting with one fourth? So this is just like in division with whole numbers. If you have a uh, number or a dividend, that is smaller than your divisor to begin with, your answer is going to be smaller than one because I don't even have one whole group of this size uh, starting with a smaller dividend. So let's look at my model again. And now I have one half represented here, one half shaded in, and I'm going to see how much of this fits into one fourth. And it's kind of hard to see through, but I do know that one fourth goes across right here. So out of one fourth, I can fit half of my half in there. So half of this fits. So I will check uh, both with multiplication and with the stay switch flip method but I could see that I can only fit half of my group into one fourth. So checking by multiplication, one half times one half. There's nothing to simplify there. So one times one is one, two times two is four. And I can verify that uh, one half times one half equals one fourth. Okay, so let's look at that down here again. I'm going to stay switch flip. My first fraction stays, my sign switches, and my second fraction flips. Again, you can either cross reduce or simplify at the end. Let's go ahead and cross reduce. The common factor there is going to be 2. So if I divide both of them by 2, and then multiply, one times one is one, two times one is two, and I did indeed get one half as my answer. So let's look at a couple more problems. Um, all of these have either a whole number or a mixed number or both. Uh, so I have this note, just like in multiplication, I need to change my whole numbers and change my mixed numbers so that they are entirely fractions. The mixed number will change into an improper fraction since the numerator will be bigger than the denominator. Um, 
as well my whole number will be improper because I'm just going to put it over 1. So that's what I need to do first. I cannot flip this until it is a fraction. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this. And then instead of writing 2, I'm just going to write 2 over 1. The problem is still exactly the same. Now I can stay switch flip. First fraction stays. My sign switches. My second fraction flips. Top times top, bottom times bottom. And my result is 1 tenth. With mixed numbers, remember that I'm figuring out the total number of pieces I have if I divide all of these whole numbers into fourths as well. So 3 times 4 is going to be 12. I know that I have 12 pieces in these whole numbers plus my 1 extra. So 12 plus 1 is 13 over 4. And the rest of my problem is all in fraction form, so I'm just going to copy that as is. And now I can stay, switch, flip. Stay, switch, flip. I'm going to go ahead and simplify, especially since I have a large prime number here. I'm going to simplify everything else. So both of these are divisible by 2. And now top times top, bottom times bottom. 13 times 1 is 13. 2 times 1 is 2. Now I need to change this from an improper fraction to a mixed number. So how many whole times or how many holes can I make uh, of two pieces going into 13? It's going to be 6 holes. 6 times 2 is 12, which means I have 1 left over. So 6 and 1 half. Okay, for my last problem, I have a whole number and a mixed number, so I'm just going to, first thing, change them both to fractions. Put my whole number over 1, divided by, I have one whole, and I'm dividing it into five pieces, so that's going to be 1 times 5 is 5 pieces, plus my 1 extra, so 5 plus 1 is 6 over 5. I'm going to stay, switch, flip. First fraction stays. Sign switches. Section, second fraction flips. So now I can cross reduce. Six and six, remember whenever you have the same number, you can just divide them both by that number. So divide both of these by six. Top times top, bottom times bottom, 1 times 5 is 5, 1 times 1 is 1, and I can simplify this to just 5. I have 5 holes.